planning on taking your four-legged friend to the groomers before Christmas, then why not ask for one of these <laughs> looks? Oh, my gosh. Gabriel Feitoza has divided the internet with his festive transformators. But what do you think? Well, Gabriel is joining us now from San Diego with his very own mini Grinch. Welcome <laughs> to you. Do you know, it's funny, isn't it? Because even within here, the image of that dog dressed as the Grinch and sort of hair dyed to be the same colour caused a very different reaction. Like some people were smiling, some people were like, oh no. And this is something you're used to, isn't it? This divides people's opinions. Yeah, um, actually, um, I was surprised with the, the reaction that it happened on the internet. The Grinch look, a lot of people were very happy and I got a lot of calls of people wanting to like bring their dog flying from New York everywhere to make their dog a Grinch. But I also got a lot of people that were concerned about what kind of dye were we using, what happened, uh, should we do that to a dog? But yeah, um, overall it was very positive. Well, let's, uh, let's answer those questions then before mm. we go any further. What kind of dye are you using? Uh, is it safe for the dog? Um, and, uh, and do you think you're absolutely happy that the dog is happy? Yeah, well, Charlie is very happy, right, Charlie? And the, everything is vegan, non-toxic, is developed for animals. And that's what I, uh, people don't understand, is that the cosmetic for the grooming industry now is very advanced. We have whitening shampoos, we have deep conditionings, we have hair dye for dogs, semi-permanent permanent dyes. And everything is vegan, non-toxic. There's a video on my TikTok where I eat the dye to show people that it's okay. Um, even some of the ingredients are food approved. And everything that is made on the dye, it's FDA approved. Mm. It does take a long time to get the dog to look like that. So if they were to come into one of your salons, I think it's sort of I, it, that one's an easier one. But some of them, they could be in there for up to three, maybe a bit longer hours. And is, is that OK yeah. for a dog? Yeah, it's totally OK, because like usually even a regular haircut, it takes about three and a half, three and a half hours. Because you think about we just don't do a bath, right? We do the bath the nails, we do the ears, we do the haircut, we have to demat a lot of the times. We look at the teeth, we do the anal glands. So there's a lot of it that comes the process, which is more than if you just go get a regular haircut yourself. Um, when you apply the dye, it's almost like a deep conditioning. For example, design like this, which is just two colors, you apply the dye, and the dye, the dye has to sit for about 25 minutes in the dog, but that's time, plenty of time for us to work on the nails, for us to work on the ears, for us to check for any mats or anything that the dog has in the body. So it really doesn't add that much time. Some designs are a little more intricate that we would add about 35, 40 minutes to the design. But in this case, it's really, I would say, 15 extra minutes to do yeah. the dye. We're, we're, we're actually seeing your work, uh, some of your work, for the first time here. And, and it, these are extraordinary works of art, you know, whether you agree or you don't agree. I mean, they are absolutely incredible. I'm assuming that if, uh. if your dog I mean, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. It's incredible. If your dog <laughs> loves attention, then this is going to get you and your dog attention when you take it out of the groomers and start walking home. Yeah, that, that definitely does. I have a lot of dogs that become like local celebrities here. <laughs> like the owners tell me like, oh my God, I live a block away from the store and it takes me an hour to get my dog back and forth yeah. because Everybody wants to stop, everybody wants to pet them, everybody wants to give them a treat, take photos. And for dogs that are very social, for dogs that love attention, is like, you know, they're in heaven because they want all the attention they can get. So you, um, you grew up in a town outside Sao Paulo. At the age of 15, you started working at dog groomers. You worked your way up. Um, and a lot of people around you, family included, didn't understand this choice of work. They don't understand the artistry that goes in it. So for you, yeah. posting on social media goes a long way to address that. You want people to see how hard this is and actually that it is artistic. Yeah, yeah it really was. Um, actually, I started doing this when I was around 12. And, you know, my, my, my parents and my friends, they all, you know, thought like, why, why don't you go study? Why don't you go do something different, become a doctor? And I was just obsessed with dogs. I wanted to do this. And now that I get to do, uh, you know, like talk to you guys and be on TikTok and um, a TV show here in the U.S., I'm very proud that I get to show people how creative and artistic dog grooming is. Because even a regular trim, that you take your dog to the groomers, uh, we still have to scope them to make the legs look like that curve. 
is literally a sculpture, a sculpture on a live animal. Mm. And that takes a lot of skill, that takes a lot of time to get there. And that's what don't, people don't really grasp when they like think about the price of the haircut. Why is it more than my hair? It's because it takes a, long, a really long time to get it done and a really long time to learn how to do it. It's really a lot of practice. Like any sort of art, you just need to practice and practice all the way to get better at it. Well, you are um, you are extraordinary. I mean, they they are works of art. Oh, um, thank but you. Uh, but gro thank grooming you so much. is essential. I mean, a lot of dogs have to be groomed. Holly has a new dog. I do. Really. I've got a golden retriever, oh. so she's so covering what are the, up. What are the tips for Holly grooming her dog? <laughs> well, um, well, I would advise you first and foremost to desensitize your dog of getting everything touched. So when you touch the paws. Touch the paws and see if you can massage in between her toes, okay? Then see if she, she will let you take things out of her mouth. Yeah. And to hold, to put your hand on her teeth. And same thing of holding the tail, right? Um, and then after, you need to sensitize her with noises. Because for example, when you grab a clipper like this, if you turn it on, it's pretty loud. And if you put by your ear when it's turned on, it's pretty loud too. So imagine with a dog that have a more sensitive hearing and it has that vibration on their ear and they don't know what's going on. They don't know it's a clipper. They don't know it's gonna get their hair cut. So uh, I would advise you to have an electric toothbrush at home that has a vibration, noise, and the feeling. And you can massage the dog's paws, massage around their nails, massage their ears when they're relaxed. So they have the sense of comfort and that vibration at home with you. Yeah, that's so when they get to the grooming, advice. that's normal, yeah. Um, listen, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure that, again, there will be a positive reaction to this and negative as well, which, which you've come to as know. As there is with everything. As there is yeah. with everything, yeah, yeah quite right. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas. We should point out, what time is it there in San Diego at the moment? Uh, right now it's 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. That's why the dog is just a little bit dozy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both like, we, we took a nap before he came here. <laughs> OK. Oh, um, thank thanks, you. Thanks, Gabriel. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.